We've gone through a lot of material recently that is particularly notationally heavy. And I apologize for that, but there was a good reason for it because we need all of that machinery to really start digging in now into image analysis and the core of computer vision. So we've done discrete time signals and systems. We've done convolution. We have done Fourier analysis and we've done sampling. And of course, early on, we did the whole image formation process to understand what are images in the first place. But now we're in pretty good shape. We have most of the mathematical machinery that we're going to need to get started to really start to manipulate uh, images. And if there are things that are a little unclear, I strongly, strongly encourage you to come talk to us, to go back to the lectures, do the exercises, and make sure that you have all of this at your fingertips because all of the material that we've done is going to stay with us throughout. You're gonna see the convolution over and over and over again. You're gonna see Fourier series over and over and again. And we're gonna be manipulating images um, over and again so that you need to understand those three or four basic concepts. So one of the things we're gonna talk about now is gonna to bring together some Fourier and convolution in a very, very uh, useful uh, um, uh, method called Pyramids. In particular, there's two types of pyramids we're going to talk about, the so-called Gaussian pyramids and the so-called Laplacian pyramids. And here, you're going to, again, you're going to see this very nice duality between thinking about things in the space domain, pixels, and in the Fourier domain. So let's imagine we have this very uh, uh, standard uh, mandrel image, baboon image, uh, in color. And I said last time when we were talking about sampling that we often have to worry about computational complexity. We often have to worry about how many pixels am I feeding into my neural net or into my analysis engine or my recognition engine. Um, and often, we just have way more pixels than we need. But so the easy thing to do, the easiest thing in the world to do is to just throw away pixels, being careful not to introduce aliasing, of course. But that's really sort of giving up a lot. And so another way to do this is maybe to do some simple calculations at a low resolution that maybe are efficient, um, but not as accurate as you like, and then work your way up into the full resolution image. And you see this in many applications from motion to stereo to recognition, is that we do some simple calculation at a low res, and then we use that to bootstrap more complex uh, calculations at a higher res. And the standard way to do that is with a so-called Gaussian pyramid. So imagine I give you this full resolution image here, and I'm going to, and notice here I've been very careful to say blur and downsample. I could have just said downsample because I've reduced the resolution by a factor of one half in both the horizontal and vertical direction, but I wanna emphasize that we need to be careful about aliasing. We have to acknowledge that this half resolution image simply can't represent some of the high frequencies that you see in this high resolution image. So we're going to slightly blur and then downsample. And I'll show you in a minute with some code how we do the blurring. And now we can of course repeat that process. This is a, uh, a half resolution in each dimension, but I can do it again. I can create something that's quarter resolution and I can do that again. This is so uh, called the Gaussian pyramid. The reason why it's called the Gaussian pyramid is that the blurring step is typically done with a Gaussian filter. It doesn't have to be, but it typically is done with the same Gaussian filter that I showed you in the previous lecture. And what you see here are, um, by a factor of two, increasingly lower and lower resolution images. And of course, this one down here, all the way over here, is really tiny, and you've lost all kinds of information there, but it's really small, and I can do really fast calculations. This one is a little bit something in the middle, and then of course this is our full resolution image. Now, one of the things that's useful to think about, um, as I promised, is what, is what is what is this in the Fourier domain? Because we've been talking about sampling in Fourier, and so let's just look at our 2D Fourier representation of the various uh, levels of this pyramid. So let me orient you here. This is our Fourier representation. Omega x, change in frequency in the horizontal direction. Omega y, change in frequency in the vertical direction. And I've drawn some concentric circles here. So this tiny little image right here, because I've blurred and downsampled, blurred and downsampled, blurred and downsampled many times, every time I'm doing that blurring, remember from the previous lecture what happens is I'm reducing the spatial, the frequency representation of the image. So it's something that may have high frequencies, and then I reduce the frequency, I reduce the frequency, I reduce the frequency, and eventually I have something that just has a very little, um, small, low frequency representation, which is what I'm showing you 
um, over here. So that little blue area is the frequency representation of this image right here. Very low frequency. Now, go up one level in the pyramid, and well, I didn't quite blur as much, so I've, I've retained some of those middle or band frequencies. Go up in the pyramid one more level, I've got a little bit more spatial frequency. So now you can see this trade-off. More pixels, good, um, because I've got uh, more information, but also bad because I've got more pixels to manipulate. And so you can see this trade-off between the Fourier energy and the pixels. And of course, if I go all the way up, I've got all my energy, um, but I also have all the pixels that I have to deal with. Okay? And again, the reason why we understand this pixel, this picture right here, is because as we are blurring and downsampling, what are we doing? We are compressing this frequency representation to be narrower and narrower band. And again, we are doing that so that we avoid the aliasing as we work our way down this Gaussian pyramid. Now, where do we use this Gaussian pyramid? Lots and lots of applications. Do a Google Scholar search for Gaussian pyramid. You will find thousands of papers that use it. From uh, display resolution. So for example, if you're transmitting images over the web and somebody is viewing it on a large monitor, like the one that's in front of me right now, you want a high resolution image, this one here. But if I'm holding a handheld device, I don't need to display this. That's ridiculous. I have a tiny little display. Maybe I'll display one of these images. And so these Gaussian pyramids can help you to determine what types of images that you want to um, display depending on the display resolution. Um, dimensionality reduction, just the sheer number of pixels that you have to manipulate. Um, efficient search and match. In fact, we will see this when we start talking about stereo matching and motion estimation, is that you can do things very efficiently at this low resolution, but it's not very accurate, but you can use that to bootstrap your way back up the pyramid until you get the best of both worlds. You get the accuracy at the high resolution, um, but the computational efficiency of, um, of having worked your way through this pyramid. And there are many, many more applications, some of which we will see later on in this class. So let's see how to put this into practice. At the end of the day, it's good to look at the pictures, but you gotta write the code. So let's go ahead and look at the code. So here's a little code for generating a uh, Gaussian pyramid for a color image. Um, I'm gonna do some convolutions and I'm gonna do them separably here because it's just a little bit more efficient. So I'm gonna load an image and here's my little blur filter. It's one over 16, four over 16, uh, eight, uh, six over 16, uh, sorry, what is that? Uh, six over 16, four over 16, one over 16. By the way, why are those values? Well, they seem bizarre. Um, so first of all, the one, four, six, four, one on the numerator, those sum to 16. So this is a so-called unit sum filter. Very, very important when you're blurring. Why? If the sum is either greater than one or less than one, you're gonna change the brightness. You're basically gonna make it darker or lighter. Go ahead and take this code and play with those, those values and you'll notice that if you don't get them to be unit sum, you can either brighten or darken the image and you absolutely don't want that. All you wanna do is blur. This isn't quite a Gaussian filter, but it's actually a pretty close approximation to a Gaussian, which is why I use it. Uh, how many levels of pyramid do we want? Just three here, full resolution, next resolution, next resolution. So I'm gonna stick each of the levels of the pyramid into the structure called P, P for pyramid. So let's go ahead and just put the highest uh, uh, level of the pyramid in, into the structure. And now I'm going to iterate um, here, this little for loop is iterating over the remaining uh, levels. So I'm gonna create a, 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 an empty image right here. And then for each color channel, so now we've got a color image. And now I've got to do what? I've gotta blur each color channel, red, green, and blue and then subsample each color channel and then put it all back together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a separable 2D convolution of the zeth color channel using my filter in the X and the Y dimension right here. And I'm gonna stick that into the zeth channel of M2, which I've initialized here. So now that's just a blurry version of at full resolution. I haven't subsampled, I've just blurred. I've reduced the spatial frequency um, uh, envelope, and now I'm going to downsample by taking every other pixel, which is what you see here. And then, of course, I'm going to stick that back into my data structure, and I'm going to repeat, 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 and then this is just a little bit of a code down here for uh, displaying all the levels of the pyramid, which are what you're going to see right here. So all the way up there is the full resolution, half resolution, downsampled by a factor of two in both dimensions, and then 
again. And of course, we could keep going all the way down. And where do you stop? Well, it depends on the original resolution. You probably don't want to get much lower than, say, 32 by 32. Once you get down to that 16 by 16 pixels, you're sort of getting into noise. Um, you're getting into very, very little content that's probably not worth it. All right, so there's the Gaussian pyramid. We actually used two concepts that we learned before, convolution and Fourier. Um, to see, to understand what is the frequency representation, and actually the third concept, which is sampling. Why do we blur when we downsample? The reason we blur is to avoid spatial aliasing and introducing artifacts in the image. This data stru structure is primarily used, not exclusively, but pri primarily used for computational efficiency. Really, really cheap to work on the low frequency, on the, on the lower levels of the pyramid, but you're giving up a little accuracy, and then you tend to work your way up the pyramid by bootstrapping the results from earlier. And we'll see some examples of that um, when we talk about motion estimation and stereo estimation as well.